All right, this week we're going to be uh, dealing with measures of variation and uh, box and whisker plots and dot plots. And uh, I've got a, a few things here for you to, uh, to take a look at. In a data set, we obviously have the median, and um, which is the middle number, or sometimes in this case, we don't have a middle number. We have actually a, a, a number right here, or it's between the three and the three. In that case, it would be three. But we also have what's called the, you know, obviously the second half of the data and the first half of the data. Okay. And what we need to do is be able to find the median of the first half of the data and the second half of the data. And that's something called the first quartile or the lower quartile and the third quartile. And then the range, the overall range that you have for a data set is basically the difference between the highest and the lowest number when you put it in order from least to greatest. So here the range would be four. You also have something called the inner quartile range, which is the difference between the first quartile and the second quartile. In this case, it would be the difference between two and three, which is one. Okay, so that's what those things are. And um, here again, we have a dot plot. Uh, remember how we do these. We're basically, every dot, um, there are 281s, three, or 282s, 483s, and so on and so forth. And it's asking us uh, what the range is and it's the difference between the highest, or sorry, the lowest and the highest number. In this case, it would be 13, the difference between 81 and 94. And here is what is a, it's called a box plot or a box and whisker plot, also known as a box and whisker plot. is a, a method visual, is for visually displaying the distribution of data values by using the mean, sorry, the median, the quartiles, and the extremes. The lower extreme is the lowest number in the data set. The upper extreme is the highest number. In this case, it's going to be right between 22 and, or sorry, 20 and 22, which is 21. Then, of course, we have the median, which is represented by this line right here, right in the middle. The first quartile is represented by the left side of a box, and the third quartile, or the upper quartile, is represented by the right side of a box. And the, then we draw a line out from that box to find the upper extreme and a line out from here to find the lower extreme. And we do this by taking a look at any given number of data sets. So one quarter of the data here, or one fourth of the data is here, one fourth is here, one fourth is here, and one fourth is here. And again, we have another one here where it comes to the ages of grandchildren. We have the lower extreme, which appears to be 11, the upper extreme, which appears to be 25, the upper or third quartile, which is 22, and the lower quartile, which is 16, and the median, here, which is 18. If you're having trouble with that, just go back and rewind the tape, rewind the video, and, 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 and you can see it there. So we have a range between 11 and 25, and that will be, what is that, 14, 11, and 25? Yes, 14, that's our range. And our inner quartile range is, of course, the difference between the lower quartile and the upper quartile. This is also called the first quartile and the third quartile, which is... 16 and 22, the difference between those two is 6. Okay. And what this does is gives us a visual representation of where the data lies. Looks like we're going to have 25% of our data is in a very, very small box right here. So we, you know, 25% is right here, 25% is here, 25 here, and again, 25 here. Before the quiz scores from students of two different classes, and what you'll need to do as in any data set, as I mentioned several times to you, is you need to make sure that you're putting your data in order from least to greatest. You have to do that. Let's get through these and get to some questions here. The double box and whisker plot below shows the weights in pounds of Labrador Retrievers and Cocker Spaniels from a veterinarian's office. So we have the data for Labradors here and the data for uh, Cocker Spaniels here. The least weight for Cocker Spaniels is how many pounds? The least weight appears to be about 15 pounds. The greatest weight for Cocker Spaniels is 30. 
Find the range of the Cocker Spaniel's weights. The range is from 15 to 30, so our range is 15. The range of weights from Cocker Spaniel's is 15 pounds. The third quartile weight for Cocker, uh, Cocker Spaniel's is the third quartile is right here. appears to be about 26 because this is a third quartile, this line right here. The first quartile or the lower quartile is 20. So 20 to 26 about. The inner quartile range for Cocker Spaniels, oh, and I'm sorry, it's 20, not 27, but it's, or it's not 26, but it's 27, excuse me. So the difference between those two is 7. So that would be what we call the inner quartile range. And you can do the same thing for Labrador Retrievers. Okay? Now, the ones I give you should not be as, you should be able to read them a little bit better than this. If you had said 26 there, I would have, I would have accepted that because it's close enough because it's between the 20 and the 20, or sorry, the 25 and the 30. Use the dot plot below for questions one and two. The dot plot below shows the grades that a class of students received on their recent social studies homework assignment. What was the first quartile of grades? Again, we would need to put these in order from least to greatest. So let's go ahead and do that now. find some space. Uh, let's see. We'll go across here. We got 75, 75, 75, 75, 80, 80, See, I'm going to try to find a better place to write all of this. Let me do this. Let me start all over. I'm out of room already. We have no 90s, okay. and we've got six 95s, so let's see if we can squeeze these in. 95, 95, 95, 95, 95, so one, two, three, four, five, six, okay. and three 100s. One, two, three, First, what we must find is the median. Okay. So in order to do that, we have to find the absolute middle number. So we say 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23. So our twelfth number, if we count these off one by one, is going to be the middle number. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, our median be right here at this 85. Okay. Now that we have a true median, the first half of the data is here. 
and the second half of the data is here. We have to find the first quartile grade or the lower quartile. So we need to find the middle number of the first part of the data, the first half of the data, excluding our true median. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Let's count it again. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So if we were to find the middle one of 11, it would be the sixth one. It would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. That, my friends, is our lower or our first quartile grade, choice B. Now you're going to have a lot more room on your paper than I did to write all this stuff. Okay, now mine looks like a mess. Um, I, I've got limited. Mr. Dibble or Ms. Fox, please call the front office. Mr. Dibble or Ms. Fox, please call the front office. Because I've got a limited amount of room here. Okay. And remember, if we have a true median or a true number in the middle, you're not going to count that as part of your first part of the data. Okay. Let's take a look at number two now. What is the third quartile grade? Well, we simply find the median of the second half of the data. Well, this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Again, we're going to be looking at the sixth data, or sixth data point, or sixth term. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. Right here is your third quartile. That is 95. Okay. So all the first and third quartiles are, or the upper and lower quartile as you may hear them called, is the median of the first half of the data and the second half. The first quartile is obviously the median of the first half of the data. Third quartile is the median of the second half. Okay. And let's move on to number three. Let me change my view here just a touch. Use the double box and whisker plot for questions three and four. The double box and whisker plot below shows the vocabulary quiz scores um, for Mr. Elderman's uh, first and second period classes. So what you want, what this does is it gives you a visual representation of the data here. All right, we have quiz scores for first period and we have quiz scores for second period. What is the inner quartile range of the first period quiz scores? First period, so we got, we, we, the, what we, one of the things we have to do is we have to slow down and make sure we're looking at the right piece of information that the question is asking us. But that is very important. Okay. So let's take a quick look at it. What is the interquartile range? Well, that is the difference between the first quartile and the second quartile. And what you have to make sure you know is that the interquartile range is between here and here. Okay? And it looks like we have somewhere between here, which is a, a 75, and a 90. And what you need to do is find the difference between 75 and 90, which is 15. Okay. Let's take a look at the next question. Which statement about the quiz scores is true? The range of the scores was the same for both classes. The range, not the interquartile range, but the range. So let's take a look at what the range was for first and second period. And we need to make sure we're taking our time and looking at this data clearly. I'm going to give you multiple choice on most of these quizzes and questions, but you've got to make sure you're taking your time and actually looking at it very well. The range for the first period class is between 70 and 95. That is a range of 25. Let's make sure I'm right. 70 and 95, which is 25. Range for second period is going to be between 75 and 100, which is a range of 25. Well, let's go ahead and make sure we got our questions right. The range of the scores were the same for both classes. It looks like that's true. I'm going to go ahead and take a look at B, C, and D to make sure. The interquartile range of the scores was the same for both classes. Remember, the interquartile range is the difference between the quartiles. So let's take, now we can visually look and see that they are not. In other words, that box is bigger than that box. If that is true, then those interquartile ranges are going to be different. So we can eliminate choice B. The mean score was the same for both classes. The mean score. And actually, if I'm thinking about this data right, the mean score 
we can't figure out because we don't know how many we don't know how many scores are in here. We don't know if there are 50 quizzes or what. We have no idea what the we cannot tell what the mean is from this day. We can tell what the median is, which is 90 and 80, but we cannot tell what the mean score is. See, about 25% of the students in both classes scored 95 or higher on the quiz. Remember, each section of this box and whisker plot is 25% or a fourth of the data. What it's saying is 25% of the kids in both classes scored above 95%. Well, here we only had one person. We didn't have anybody in first period score above 95%. That was actually the highest grade, and it said above 95. So we got to be careful what the question is asking us. We do have about 25% in the second period class that scored above a 95, but none in um, period one. So choice D is thus eliminated. All right. Number four, the Boston Whisker plot shows the number of miles run per week by the members of a running club. What is the range of the data? Remember, the range is simply the difference between the lowest and the highest number, which will be, in this case, the difference between 3 and 21, which is 18. Six, the box and whisker plot shows the ages of the participants in a park cleanup. What is the interquartile range of the ages in years? Looks like we have, and you got to be careful, this is 22. So we got 22 all the way up to 38. Now let me check that and make sure. Between 22 and 24 is 20, okay. Or 20 and 24 is 22, good. Between 36 and 40 is 38. So that's a difference of 16. And let us try... The constructed response. The double box and whisker plot below shows the heights in millimeters of plants that uh, Jaron and Marsha grew for a science project. So this is Jaron, this is Marsha. How do the ranges of the inner, I'm sorry, how do the ranges and the interquartile ranges for Jaron's plants compare to the ranges and interquartile ranges for Marsha's plants? Okay, this is again where we're comparing two different things. So let's compare the range for Jaren's and the interquartile range for Jaren. The range for Jaren is between 28 and 40, which is 12. The interquartile range for Jaren is between 30 and 36, which is 6. Now we're going to find the range for Marsha, which is between 26 and 40, which is 14, and the inner quartile range for Marsha, which is um, only 4. Okay. So how do the ranges compare? Well, you could simply say Marsha's range is higher by 2 points. But, Jared's interquartile range is higher by two points. Or you could say Marsha's interquartile range is two points lower than Jared's. So basically, I'm asking you to compare the two numbers using both terms, using both people, and the distance between the two. Okay. That's how those stack up. Whose plants show greater variability in weight? Or sorry, height. Explain your thinking. The greater variability in height. I would argue that this one, Marsha's, is because her range is so much larger. Okay? We've got a pretty big section here, some small sections here, but her range is overall larger of 14. Okay? All right. We will have a quiz coming up next Friday. Good luck.